Joe from Bad Influence. In this week's programme, a first look at next year's Super Console, the Saturn, and the first Saturn game, Virtua Fighter. We'll be reviewing one of the first games for this year's add-on for the Mega Drive, the 32X, Star Wars Arcade. And Z Wright finds out how a New York TV station is using all the latest video techniques for a very serious purpose, to try and stop kids carrying guns into school. Hello, slimy furtlers. Today, important safety tips. First, sound levels while you're playing. Now, it's very important you don't have your TV turned down too low while you're playing, otherwise you might get ear strain. I can demonstrate this most clearly with my first cheat, which is a level skip for crew ball on the Mega Drive. Go to the sound test screen and listen to volume level six. And then press A, C, A, B and start. Then you can skip levels by pressing up and B. Here we go. Level two, three, four. But, Furtlers, you may have noticed that I was struggling slightly with that last cheat because I could hardly hear volume level six. Great danger of ear strain. So, I suggest using one of these. A separate amplifier and speaker setup. I've got 17 ohms, 2,000 watts and several stages. Right. Whoa! 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 Okay, well, my little poisson old perfectly still, and I will create. Here we go. Hello. Hello, Violet. Now, unlike my old-fashioned friend here, I've moved on to a more modern way of painting. So, if you fancy making your own Christmas cards this year, have a look at this. It's called the Art Pad. You plug it into your PC and use this pen to draw on it. It comes with a paint package called Dabbler. First of all, I always put my paper angled when I draw on it, and that's what I've done here. And I can actually do that on the screen as well. Here we go, just angle that slightly. And that's much easier to draw on now. Also, I can choose the texture of the paper I want. I open this drawer at the top. There's a whole range of different textures, but I'm going to choose canvas, because I'm going to be using oils a little later on, and that's very important for oils. Now, to show you, one of the best things I use the crayon facility about the art pad is the harder you press, the harder it comes out, and the lighter you press, you get a much lighter touch. Not much so far, but we'll see what we can do about that. If I pick up the spray paint and uh, a nice orangey warm glow for the background, you can hear the sounds as well, of course, that's excellent. Give myself a little background press harder over this side so we give it some dimension to the picture. Now moving on to my oil paints, there you go. Now you can either paint normally with oils or you can do what I'm doing here and choose one of the styles that come with the package, this is the impressionist style. So you don't have to paint all these little bits by hand, you can just use the pen and it will automatically make it look a bit like an impressionist picture. Now, next, I want to do some baubles. So open the drawer here for all the different colour palettes and choose a much brighter palette for some nice bright baubles. And I'll paint with normal paints on this, so just choose my brush and I pick a red for the baubles. And I think I'll have five of those. So that's one, two, three, four, five. It's going to look a bit better now. Oh, and a star at the top of the tree. There you go, lovely star. So, but it looks a bit rough, and I can actually improve it a great deal by picking this little water droplet. Now, when I've got the water droplet tool, I can just smudge around the edges there, or give the star a bit of luminance around the edge so it looks like it's shining out brightly, and just make the baubles look, you know, less brash, I think. It's lacking a certain something, and what I think it's lacking is tinsel. So if I go back to the oil paints and open my drawer here, I can choose a pointillist star. Now, the pointillism was something that was very popular in the 19th century. Basically, to you and me, it's just like a load of painting with a load of little dots. But it's perfect for tinsel. Nice, fat tinsel with my pointillist style. And there you go, the perfect Christmas card, ready for printing out. Violet, hmm? Violet, I've finished. Come on. Let's have a look. Have a look at this. Now, you did a technique called pointillism, didn't you? Uh, yeah. I call this pointless. Look and learn. Look and learn, Violet. The latest add-on for the Mega Drive, the 32X, hits the shops this weekend. More about the system itself later in the programme, but for now our first 32X review, Star Wars Arcade. It's an arcade game about the Star Wars story. Who'd have thought it? With the details, here's Adam. With all the hype there's been about the 32X, I would have expected this game to be a lot better, but all it is is a waste of a Star Wars licence. 
This differs from the other Star Wars console games, which are platform-based by using first-person perspective. What really destroys this game is the lack of control of the X-Wing. It's far too sluggish and you might as well be flying it underwater. And on top of that, there's no pause. All the start button does is change your viewpoint. There's also a two-player mode where one person plays a pilot and the other plays a gunner who uses a smaller gun sight on screen. It's quite fun, but it's not a major selling point of the game. By no stretch of imagination is it worth £60 and £170 to get the system as well. Let's hope the next games that come out are better than this. It's not a bad game, but it's not a great one either. There's nothing really special about it. The gameplay is limited, and the levels are not varied enough. I'm sure it doesn't use the full capabilities of the new hardware. And the scores for Star Wars Arcade? A disappointing 3 out of 5 from the boys and the girls. Hi, and welcome to New York's Times Square. This city is one of the biggest in the world, but it's got to be as it's home to the Empire State Building, Madison Square Garden, and the world's second tallest building, the World Trade Center. New York is also home to the hippest, busiest music station in the world, MTV. Welcome. Our name is Maxine. With music videos and promos being shown 24 hours a day, MTV acts as a showcase for some of the hottest computer graphics around. And just a few blocks away, you'll find the offices of RGA, one of the world's biggest Adam film agencies. RGA have worked on some of the biggest movies of all time. They were responsible for the special computer effects behind blockbusters like Demolition Man and this brand new movie called The Shadow. But now these two pioneering companies have joined forces to combat a problem that's plagued New York for years, guns. This is the Times Square body clock. 15 young people are shot and killed every day in America. MTV and RGA decided to produce this hard-hitting video together to warn kids about the dangers of getting involved with guns. In the movie, two street kids get into an argument that ends with devastating results. Computers were used to draw chalk line drawings around the characters as they go for their guns, emphasizing the point that as soon as you touch a weapon, you're as good as throwing your life away. RGA used a technique called motion capture to produce real-time computer animation. Stuntmen were connected up to this magnetic sensor rig and copied the movements of the actors in the film exactly to produce the computer chalk lines. A sensor was placed at all the vital points on their bodies and connected to a computer. Then the stuntman stood near this black box which radiates a magnetic field and acted out the actions as the computer records their movements. Okay. Stand up, move your left arm up and down. After the motion capture up. information is saved, it's Sit. brought into the computer edit suite to be tidied up. One of the problems we get with motion capture is instability in the, mo in the motion. Uh, you see here in this scene that the leg at one point is jumping up just for one or two frames and this is totally unnatural. This is due to the fact that we are using a magnetic field to uh, capture this motion. The magnetic field is not very stable. For example, if you have some metal in the floor, that will create this kind of instability. So what I can do is just to move this point and to put it back where it should have been. So now that I did that, everything should look much better. Yeah, it's not jumping anymore. The final stage is to match the finished computer graphics with the film. In most cases, the motion capture was shot first and the actors directed afterwards. But here, for the close-up, that would have been too difficult as the film would have had to fit inside the lines perfectly, requiring many takes. So they simply drew around the figure afterwards. The film's been shown on MTV for six months now, and the clock's still rolling on. But it's hoped that with the new mix of computer technology and video, that the message will eventually get through. And in the continuing fight against weapons, shops in New York have even stopped stocking toy guns in a bid to combat the problem. Let's hope it helps. Now for this week's News and Preview. Fans of NBA Jam can now play their favourite basketball game in miniature. It's due out on the Game Boy in a couple of weeks' time. Handheld basketball games tend to be a bit duff, but this one's looking good. It's just as fast as the SNES version. All the NBA teams are represented and all the dunks are in there too. The first TV animation series to be produced entirely on computer starts just after Christmas. 
Reboot was made on the same supercomputers which brought you the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. It's the story of Bob and Dot, two sprites who live in an incredible high-tech metropolis called Mainframe. As with all good stories, there's an evil baddie. This one's called Megabyte. Watch out for Reboot from January the 3rd on CITV. A bunch of ex-games journalists have released their very own game for the Amiga. Fed up of reviewing other people's efforts, they formed their own production company, Binary Asylum. And this is their first offering, Z-Wolf. It's a 3D helicopter shoot 'em up which looks a bit like the old classic game Virus, but plays a lot like Desert Strike. It's in the shops now. Thirtlers, another important safety tip. <laughs> when you're playing, don't let your fingers get too fast. It can badly strain your joypads. Hey, I can demonstrate in this carefully controlled experiment using Super Tennis on the SNES. Now, during a game, press select, <laughs> then go over to controller two and press. R R left down B A L L, and you'll hear some applause. Then go back to controller one and press B or A, and you'll get four rows of eight characters. Now these are the player's stats, and you can alter these by pressing X. There we go, and it makes your opponents really fast. Uh, just watch this. <laughs> wow! Uh, look at that serve. Hey! And now uh, on with the demonstration. <laughs> 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 there you go, fellas. Proof positive that excessive speed can seriously damage your joypad. So, oh, and please, uh, I am a highly trained joypad operative. Do not try this at home. <laughs> this is the machine everybody's been waiting for. Sega's new 32-bit console, the Saturn. Games come on carts and also on CD. And in Japan, it comes packaged with this one, Virtual Fighter. The 3D polygon graphics bring amazing realism to the fights, and a camera swoops around the fighters so you can watch the action from different angles. There'll be plenty of arcade releases too. The latest Virtua arcade game, a futuristic police shoot 'em up called Virtua Cop, will make it onto the system, as will this one, Virtua Fighter 2. These amazing and exclusive first look pictures are straight from the arcade headquarters in Japan. They're so new that the arcade machine hasn't even been released yet. The new version differs wildly from the first and features fully texture mapped 3D sprites and new characters. We'll be comparing the Saturn with the other new consoles, the Ultra 64 and the PlayStation, in a couple of weeks' time. To bridge the gap until the Saturn's official UK release next year, Sega are releasing this today. The 32X add on for the Mega Drive. You simply plug the 32X into your Mega Drive and then you connect the video output of the Mega Drive with the 32X. Like so, then you slot in the cart. It combines the graphics of the Mega Drive with the 32X, as well as Star Wars Arcade, Sable will be releasing two other games for it before Christmas. Doom is a conversion of a classic PC game, and this one, Virtual Racing Deluxe, features more tracks and two brand new cars. More Mega Drive news, except it's not a Mega Drive, it's a Scorpion. It's the first non-Sega Sonic compatible console. Made by a British company, it comes complete with two of these six-button turbo joypads. It looks like a Mega Drive and it plays like a Mega Drive, but it does have some extra features as well. I'll just switch it off and turn it over to show you. Now, on the back, there's a hidden panel, and the idea is when you buy a Scorpion, you'll get a free game built in. What will happen is the shop owner will remove this panel, as we've done already, break open a normal Mega Drive cartridge, and that's what the inside of a Mega Drive cartridge looks like, and then just plug it into your Scorpion like that. And then when you switch the machine on, you'll get the free game. If you want to play another game, though, you plug it in the top as normal and it'll bypass the free game. Clever. There's also a built-in games converter. It's on the side here, underneath this panel. There's a couple of switches and you put them in different positions to make the Scorpion compatible with virtually any Mega Drive game from anywhere in the world. Now, to test it, we're going to use this, which is our pre-production copy of Earthworm Jim. This is designed for use on the American system only. If you plug it into a UK Mega Drive, you get this on the screen. Developed for use only with the NTSC Genesis systems. NTSC is the American TV system. Ours is called PAL and Genesis. is what they call a Mega Drive in America. So, if this works, when I plug it into the Scorpion, it should work. And hey, presto, it does. We decided to give the Scorpion the ultimate compatibility test. So, we plugged the 32X into the Scorpion, like so. Oh, and then we came across, well, quite a major problem, because as you can see, the video connector clearly won't fit. So, we had a special lead made up 
and it still didn't work. So, whatever else is good about the Scorpion, it won't be compatible with the 32X. The Scorpion will cost you about £70, but you might have trouble getting hold of it because shops that normally sell Mega Drives perhaps won't stock it. You might find one in Beatties, but beware, it's an unlicensed product. That means, if anything goes wrong, you might have problems putting it right. And now for some more games reviews. Club Drive for the Jaguar has four race areas, all set on the west coast of America. There's no course to follow, you can go anywhere you fancy, but the aim of the game is to collect as many coloured balls as possible. Here's Chris. This game seems a bit pointless. It's a driving game, yet for no apparent reason you have to collect power balls, and when you do find them, they don't appear to do anything. You can also play it as a straight racing game, and these are the streets of San Francisco. It's nice that you've got the freedom to move around, but because there are no other cars on the streets, there's no real objective to the game, and it can become very frustrating. The car is very difficult to control as well. It takes a lot of practice, and even when you're used to the steering, you still crash into walls you thought you'd avoided due to the bad collision detection. In fact, the only other vehicle on the streets is this tram, which I've just driven straight through. This is a two-player option called Tag. I'm player two, and I have to hit player one to make him it. And it's quite good fun, for about two minutes. Yeah. Any new console needs some really good games to make to success. Unfortunately for the Jaguar, Club Drive is not going to do the trick. It's an original idea for a game, but it doesn't work because the graphics are so poor. This is a waste of plastic. The gameplay is pathetic and it looks terrible. Nothing turbocharged about the scores. Club Drive gets the lowest possible one from the boys and the girls. Boogerman is described as a pick-and-flick adventure. He flicks balls of snot at his enemies, and he also seems to have rather a lot of flatulence. How terribly unpleasant is Emily. This is a little boy's dream come true. You can do all the things your mum would never let you do in polite company. The best power-ups are the chilli peppers, which give you a turbocharged dose of wind so that you can fly. The whole game is disgusting. The toilet humour is carried on throughout the game, and after a while, it will begin to get on your nerves. Once the novelty value has worn off, which it will do pretty quickly, all you're left with is a bog-standard platform game. 25 levels of toilet humour, no thanks. This one's for silly schoolboys who giggle at naughty words. It's just stupid. Scores, then. Boogerman gets a smelly, snotty old three from the boys and the girls. Fertlers, my last important safety tip. <laughs> Don't stare at your TV screens too long. This TV was looked at too long, and look what's happened to it. The middle bit, where people look the most, has completely worn out. <laughs> now, my TV is looked at by millions of people every week, and as you can see, it's been completely overlooked. It's beginning to fade. <laughs> I better do today's last cheat before the picture disappears completely. Now, this is a hard one for Mortal Kombat 2 on the SNES, but it lets you play against a new secret character. On the character select screen, just press left, up, down, down, right, and select. Here we go. Right, and select. And you'll be whisked into battle with a brand new character, Noob the Ninja. Now, Furtless, if your TV starts to go grey in the middle, you must immediately take these three important precautions. One, watch round the edges rather than in the middle. Two, never allow more than two people at once to watch. And three, watch by peeking through your fingers rather than uh, giving it a hard stare. Last week's competition prize was one of these nifty little projectors, and the question was, which city has the only IMAX cinema in Britain? The answer is Bradford. In fact, it's at the National Museum of Film, Television and Photography, and if you're ever in Bradford, it's well worth a visit. Almost 19,000 names were written on our bad influence lottery balls, but the name pulled out by our computerised Noel Edmonds was Francis McGugan of London. Well done, Francis. Ten runners-up get bad influence better than sleep T-shirts. This week's competition prize is a Mega Drive, a 32X, and a game for it. And the question is, what is the correct name for the style in which this picture is painted, made up of lots of dots? Phone in your answers on 0891 555 999. Calls will cost no more than 25p, and lines close at midnight on Monday. But make sure you get permission from whoever pays the phone bill. Well, that's it for now, but don't forget to watch next week when we'll be getting ready for Christmas with some great present ideas. Don't you just love being in control? Hope you enjoyed the programme. We'll leave you with another mega exclusive look at Virtual Fighter 2. Oh, be quiet, Violet. Ready, go!